So it turns out that a lot of people don't make nearly as much money for their time as they think they do. In fact, a lot of people make half or less of what their supposed hourly rate is. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to calculate what your real hourly rate is, and I'm gonna talk about what that means for you and your life. Whether you get paid hourly or on salary, everyone gets compensated a certain amount of money for their time, and it's really important for you to know what that number is. And I'm not just talking about how much money your employer says they're paying you, I'm talking about how how much money you are receiving for the total amount of time and money that you are putting into your job. I'm basing this video off the concept that time is the most valuable asset that you have, meaning that it's way more valuable than money is. And if that's true, wouldn't it be super important for you to know how much time you're putting into your job outside of your paid hours? And wouldn't it be great to know how much money you're actually trading away hours of your life for? At its most basic definition, your real hourly rate is how much money you walk away with per hour after you factor in things like taxes, commuting, getting ready for work, decompressing, uh, preparing meals and things like that. And because the ultimate goal is financial freedom where you don't have to trade your time for money, any amount of time and money that you spend on your job should be taken out of your hourly rate so you know what your true compensation is. So I'm gonna do an example of what it looks like to calculate your real hourly rate. But before I do, if you're getting any value out of this video, all I ask is that you take a quick second and hit the like button for me. It helps my channel out a ton and it helps me push this content out to more people so I would really appreciate it a lot. And with that said, let's jump into our example and say that you get paid $20 an hour for 40 hours a week. So at first glance, you would hypothetically be trading 40 hours of your life for $800 before we factor in anything else. And as we start to look at other factors, we're going to be adding hours into your total amount spent in the week, and we're going to be subtracting any expenses from your total amount of compensation for the week. And before we do anything else, we have to factor in taxes because we're talking about how much you are getting compensated and any money sent to the government is not yours. And it's safe to say that someone who makes 20 hours per week is probably going to be taxed about 20% on their income. So right off the bat, your take home pay is now $640. Now let's talk about commuting. So the national average in the US for commute time is 52 minutes per day, or at least that's what it was before 2020, if you know what I mean. For this example, I think it's safe to say that you commute one hour per day for your job, which results in five hours per week. In addition to that, we need to talk about gas money because when you're driving 60 minutes per day, you're likely going through about two gallons of gas. And when gas is $3.30 per gallon, we're talking about $6.60 per day of gas or $33 per week. So that means we can add five hours to our weekly total and subtract $33 from our compensation just for commuting every week. So next, let's talk about getting ready for work. Luckily, that doesn't really cost any extra money, but it does cost you time. And let's say that you can get ready for work in about 30 minutes. 30 minutes, five times a week, adds up to two and a half hours per week. And I don't mean to scare you, but we are already down to $12.78 per hour after factoring in those few things. So just let that sink in for a second. And unfortunately, we still have some more things to factor in, and the next one is decompressing from work. Now, it may seem like I'm reaching here, but this is a legitimate thing to consider. Let's just be honest here and admit that most people aren't going to be able to come home from a now 10 hour day and get straight to being productive, being active, and living a fulfilling life for the rest of the night. And based off of that, we can estimate about five hours of time and $20 of expenses for decompressing from work. And unfortunately, we're not done just yet. We need to talk about dressing for work. Most people need to purchase clothes that they can wear for their job, and they even buy things like grooming and makeup products. Whether it's a suit and tie for a business job or just black pants for a fast food job, eventually you're going to need to make some purchases. Basically anything that goes into what you wear or what your appearance is that you wouldn't normally do if it wasn't for your job needs to be factored in here. So I think we can safely adjust for one and a half hours per week and about $15 per week for this. And unfortunately we're not done just yet because we still have to talk about food. If you don't think that you spend any extra money or time whatsoever on meals because of your job, then you can go ahead and skip this step. But if you're still here, it's probably because you occasionally eat out during your workday for the sake of 
convenience, or you need to spend time and money to make your food portable by buying things like ice packs, baggies, coolers, lunch bags, Tupperware, or whatever you might need. And when you also think about the time that it takes to prepare your meals from home, we can safely factor in three extra hours and about $30 every week for your meals. And to be honest, there are a lot of other things that we could consider here, like time and money spent vacating from your job, job-related illnesses, and a variety of other things. But we're going to go easy for now since it is an example, so let's take a look at our final numbers. So after everything we just talked about, we're now talking about spending 57 hours per week for a total compensation of $542, which amounts to $9.51 per hour. $9.51 per hour is less than half of the $20 per hour we're supposed to make, and that's just from factoring in these few things. And when you're making $9.5 per hour, that means that you are trading one hour for your life for $9.50. Every dollar you spend now counts for over six minutes of your life. So if you need a $5 coffee drink to get through the day, you have to spend over 30 minutes of your life for it. And just think about how all of that time adds up when you spend your money. That's why it's so important to know what your true hourly rate is. Remember, time is more valuable than money. So this helps you realize what the true cost of spending money is, which I'm gonna talk about more in my next video. And this is why financial freedom is such an amazing goal to have, because when you finally achieve it, you no longer have to trade your time for money. So calculating your real hourly rate is going to look different for everyone, but hopefully this gets you started. I'm going to put a link in the description for a calculator that should give you a general idea of what your real hourly rate is and while it might not be super exact it's a really good start and just so you know a lot of the information I talk about in this video is explained really well in the books your money or your life and financial freedom which I really recommend if you want to start taking control of your life and really valuing your time so I'll put links in the description for those as well because they're really worth checking out and with that I'm gonna end the video right there so if you made it this far thank you so much for hanging out I really appreciate it let me know what you think down in the comment section and please take a second to smash the like button for me my next video is going to be a about the true cost of spending money. And if you like videos like this, you should go ahead and subscribe because I post two videos like this every single week on things like finance, homeownership, and lifestyle, and you're not gonna wanna miss it. So thanks again and take care for now.